Alright, today this is going to be the beginning of a new series that I'm going to have on my channel. Um, I just decided to do this literally at this, right this moment. Um, I'm going to be reading the Tao Ji Kune Do by Bruce Lee. And this book right here, I kind of want to go from the beginning towards the end, little by little, video by video, to talk about each part from the beginning to end. You know, there's a lot going on right now with the world and how it's changed since Bruce Lee's passed away. And I think he passed away like in the 1970s. And right now it's like 2016. So it's been like over 40 years. And a lot of things have been going on. You know, a lot of different people have, you know, taken, gone on stage and did their thing like a Jackie Chan and a Donnie Yen and a Jet Li and Tony Ja and Steven Seagal and Van Damme and Chuck Norris and everybody's taking their turns in Hollywood. And then now, you know, what's popular right now is the, the cage fighting, the MMA. And that's kind of taking over a lot of the people's attention. There's even the Kung Fu Panda now and then there's the, you know, there used to be the Karate Kid and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers. Everybody's kind of taking their turns to to influence the public since the way, you know, since the time Bruce Lee's passed away. But right now it is the cage fighting that's taken a lot of the public's attention. Just recently they said that, you know, they, they sold their company for I think over, f I forgot how many billion, like f five billion dollars or whatever the case may be. It's very popular now. And that's what people are associating with the martial arts. And they're even saying that Bruce Lee was the father of MMA, which I, I, I disagree. You know, I, I say that Bruce Lee was the father of Ji Kune Do. You know, the father, the father of Tao of Ji Kune Do, not the father of MMA. You know, this does not say mixed martial arts. But I wanted to go over his teachings in this book as a way to bring his spirit back alive. You know, because obviously he, he's passed away. And he's not going to be creating any new books or any new movies. All we have left is what he left us off with. And my way is kind of bringing his teachings back to the present moment. So rather than people paying attention to the next thing that's, you know, on the UFC or whatever the case may be, they could tune into this channel to kind of bring back the teachings of what Bruce was teaching you know when he was alive and we could analyze these teachings together to truly come to understanding that what he had to share is clearly not what we see today in the in the cage fighting you know and it's important that all the followers of Bruce Lee or the the people that are highly inspired by him to really understand his teachings so then they can represent it within themselves the proper way, you know, not just his teachings, but the teachings of the East in general, you know, because, you know, it is the Tao, you know, the way of Jeet Kune Do, or the way of martial arts, you know, so with that being said, start from the very beginning, um, there's no page number associated with this one, but it's the intro, it's going to be this part right here, we'll just go over this part real quick. So into a soul absolutely free from thoughts and emotion, even the tiger finds no room to insert its fierce claws. One and the same breeze passes over the pines on the mountain and the oak trees in the valley. And why do they give different notes? No thinking, no reflecting, perfect emptiness. Yet therein something moves, following its own course. The eye sees it, but no hands can take hold of it. The moon in the stream. Clouds and mists, they are mid-air transformations. Above them eternally shine the sun and the moon. Victory is for the one, even before the combat, who has no thought of himself, abiding in the no-mindedness of a great origin. End. So I just want to read everything that it says in this end offer my personal reflections if I have any upon what I just read you know and this is the beginning um,
So, you know, the beginning part, into a soul absolutely free from thoughts and emotion. Even the tiger finds no room to insert its fierce claws. So the tiger is known to be a very powerful animal, you know, that it's just no challenge, you know, for a tiger to fight a man. I mean, if a man had no weapons, no, no guns, no knives, and it's just him against the tiger, a tiger would just destroy the man because the tiger is just so powerful, such a powerful animal, you know, and when it says into her soul, so, you know, rather than comparing man to man, you know, we have all this cage fighting going on, all this boxing, where it's man against man, but imagine if there's no, no such thing where they, you know, where it's man against man, they put a man literally against a tiger, and they do that over and over, obviously, you know, the tiger is going to destroy the man because this, this is the tiger's. The tiger's realm is unarmed combat. This is what they're good at, you know. And so it says, into the soul absolutely free from thoughts and emotion. Even the tiger finds no room to insert its fierce claws. So into the soul absolutely free from thoughts and emotion. So he's saying, in my opinion, he's saying into a person that is that's in meditation, he has no thoughts, he has no emotion, he's just, he, he's just thoughtless, emo you know, no emotions, he's just connected to the whole. So he's not separate, he's not separate from the tiger, he's not separate from the trees, he's not separate from the universe, he's just a part of it. So, I mean, if he's just a part of the universe, then he transcends death and it's like a tiger just roaming and then there's nothing to fight. Like, the tiger, you know, there's trees, there's water, there's the lake, there's a human, there's other animals. He's just, there's, there's nothing to fight, there's nothing to, to, you know, because you're just a part of everything. You know, you transcend death, so you can't even, there's no such thing as death at that moment. So, the tiger cannot even fight you because you're not even there. Basically, you're not even there. You're just, you're there, but you're not there. Like, you, you're not, your mind is not there. You know, you're, you're just a part of everything. So, there's nothing to fight. You know, so he, he, he can't, he can't kill you because you're a part of the eternal, you know. That's what I get from that first part. The next part says, one and the same breeze passes over the pines in the mountain and the oak trees in the valley, and why do they give different notes? What that gets me to think about, the breeze is the same, like it's, the wind is the same. But the way that the pine interprets, you know, the way the wind affects the pine is a different sound than the way the oak is a different. But the breeze is the same, so it's like the truth. It's like the truth is the same, so Bruce Lee is like expressing the truth. And then the way that I interpret it is going to be, and I express it the way that I am affected by that, that breeze of truth is going to be the different than the ways these people, you know, call combat sport. So, or like the cage fighting, like these cage fighters will interpret his teachings differently with a different sound than the way that I take it in and I express it 
it, they sound different, you know, but the breeze is the same, the truth is the same, but the way that it's being absorbed, it's different, you know, is different. The pine and the oak is different. And why is it different? But the breeze is the same, you know. That's what it gets me to think about, you know. Next part, no thinking, no reflecting, perfect emptiness. Yet therein something moves, following its own course. No thinking, no reflecting, perfect emptiness. That's like being in meditation. And you just, you just go with the flow. You, you're just a part of nature. You know, you're just going to move with nature. Without the mind getting in the way. You just go, you go with it. You don't, you don't, you don't resist it. The mind is what creates resistance. The mind is just not even there. There's no thinking, there's no reflecting, it's just empty. So it's like having a paper bag or like a plastic bag just being blown by the breeze. Wherever the breeze takes it is where it goes. Like there's no resistance. There's no mind, there's nothing there to, 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 to resist. Next part. The eye sees it, but no hands can take hold of it. The moon in the stream. So, it's just, the moon is being reflected in the stream. You can see the moon, but you can't touch it. But it's there. It's a mirror. It's a reflection of the reality. Certain things, your eyes can see, but you can't necessarily ever touch. The moon, most of us will never actually be able to touch the moon. We can just see the moon. So there's the real moon that you see, the real one. And then there's the reflection of it, which is in the stream. They're both images of the moon, but there is one image that is real, and there is one image that's just a reflection. But neither of them you could touch. You can't touch the moon that you, the actual moon that you could see. And you can't touch the moon within the stream either. Clouds and mists, they are mid air transformations. Above them eternally shine the sun and the moon. So clouds will always move and always change. Mists will always move and change. But the sun and the moon is always there. Eternally. As long as this world is here, the sun and the moon will be here. So they're here eternally. Thoughts and emotions are like the clouds and the mist. They change, but that's not the eternal truth. The eternal truth is always here, the sun and the moon. So the meditation is always there. That's the truth. That's eternal. Victory is for the one, even before the combat, who has no thought of himself, abiding in the no-mindedness of great origin. So, when you have no mind, when you have no ego, no thought of yourself, no such thing as winning and losing, you just don't even exist outside of the ultimate reality of everything. 
you don't have a name. You're not special. And something else is not is, is special. Is not special. It's like you're a part of everything. So your existence is just as significant as the blade of grass, as the pine, as the oak, as the birds, as the tiger. Your significance is just as significant as everything out there. You're, you're not separate from anything. And you have no mind. When you have no mind, there's just no way to resist. There's nothing to resist. You're just a part of everything. You're in meditation. So essentially, if you achieve meditation, you're victorious. Because as soon as you achieve meditation, you understand that there's nothing to fight. That's the first part, first video, Dao Ji Kundo, video number one.